back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers the types of tail rotor issues in helicopters. These are the type of things that cause helicopters to spin out of control and sadly crash moments later. Um, truthfully, each one of the four subjects covered in here could be its own video. Um, but um, we're talking helicopters spinning out of control, crashing moments later. We're going to outline each one of those. Uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe below, and we'll go ahead and get started. Now, there are four big categories to cover in this uh video with the first one being loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Once again, I have a whole video on this one uh, covering this in, in great detail. Um, I'll put a link in the description and above, but simply put, this is an uncommanded rapid right yaw that doesn't stop on its own and can cause loss of aircraft control. Um, in counterclockwise rotating aircraft, this is a spin to right or to the right. And for all these examples, this will be counterclockwise rotating systems. So anything clockwise is just going to be reversed. But this is going to be what's regarded as a wind issue. There's nothing mechanically wrong with the helicopter. Nothing is breaking. Nothing is severed. It's just a helicopter that encounters uh, a wind gust that hits the aircraft just right um, to cause a, a spin to, to start. Normally, the helicopters are operating at uh, near their MTA. That's the max torque available or at OGE power settings, that's out of ground effect. Um, and they're operating at, say, less than effective translational lift, that's ETL, um, slash at a hover. So it's very low airspeed conditions, high power settings. The wind hits the aircraft just right and it wants to spin. Generally, this is, uh, um, or sorry, this is known as purely a wind issue. Once again, if you have any questions on that, take a look at my, uh, my video on it. Um, so the next type of tail rotor issue is what's known as loss of tail rotor authority, and it's going to be slightly different than this one. Now, the only written reference I found for this term actually comes from the Naval Helicopter Manuals. The tail rotor is uh, commonly associated with running out of left pedal um, and this loss of tail rotor, tail rotor authority um, condition. So it's what's known as a, a physical stop in left pedal or physical stop in the pedals. Um, it's when the tail rotor hits an angle of attack limit and literally cannot produce any more thrust or anti-torque um, ability. So the angle of attack slash angle of incidence is really at a physical limitation. It just cannot increase any more than what it's already giving. <clears throat> um, it generally occurs at high gross weights, high density altitudes, um, Go ahead and write all this down. High gross weight, high density altitudes, or if there's any kind of drooping uh, or slowing down of the main rotor because you're pulling in too much power. Um, the pilot has a lot of collective applied. Um, the pilot applies left pedal, but it's at a physical stop or an angle of uh, attack um, limitation. It just cannot produce any more, so the aircraft begins to yaw to the right. This is a mechanical limit limitation. And some manuals lump this into loss of tail rotor, rotor effectiveness, but the big distinguishing point here is this is a wind issue, this is a mechanical issue, although this mechanical issue can be affected by winds if they hit just right, you can find yourself running out of pedal, but it can occur without any kind of wind condition. This can be a, a physical stop. All right, so moving on to the next type of tail rotor issue, this is what's known as a fixed pitch or a stuck pedal, depending on how you call it. Um, different manuals refer to it as different things. Really can vary by a few different uh, uh, things in the flight controls. So this could be a jammed rod or cable in the flight controls that doesn't allow the, the tail rotor uh, to move, or it could be electronic failure of a flight computer that doesn't allow the tail rotor to, to move. Either way, the tail rotor acts as if the pedals are stuck and in a fixed pitch condition um, that doesn't change. It's just in the last uh, position that it is with no change. Um, to it. So in either case, you don't have control of the tail rotor. And there are a few instances where this can occur. It could be at a high power setting or a low power setting. If it occurs at a high power setting, generally you want to do a high power approach because um, most likely it happened uh, with a high power takeoff. You're in a high power setting, so the pitch is stuck for a high power setting. So you need to figure out a way to land with a high power setting, which is more so going to be a steep type approach where you can keep uh, the power ran, so you're getting less than ETL, you're gonna get into that OG power on the approach. It's, uh, this could also occur at, say, a low power setting, so maybe you're in cruise flight or in max rate of climb endurance at a low power setting. In this case, you wanna have a shallow approach, generally to a, a run-on or a roll-on landing. Um, 
the the pitch of the tail rotor is in these cases it's it's stuck it's not going to change so if it happened at a high power setting if it happened high land high if it happened low land low that means high power setting land high power setting low uh, power setting land with the low power setting um, another place that, th that this could happen could be at a hover if you find that this uh, if you find that this did occur at a hover you have a few options one um, you could either attempt a flyaway. In that case, you're gonna go to either the high or the low. Most likely, if it was a hover, it is a high power setting. So you can try a high power setting approach. Or if you don't want to do the flyaway technique, you can do a, a droop down technique. Um, in this case, you're gonna slowly lower the collective, slowly reduce the power lever or the throttle, and you can kind of droop your way to the ground, maintaining control depending on um, if the if the hover was um, controllable to begin with. Once again, I would practice this, you know, in the simulator or with an instructor um, before the day comes where you may have to find yourself doing this live for real if you have an actual failure. All right, so moving on from a fixed pitch, you have a loss of components. Um, this could be a few different types of components. You could have a, uh, a loss in the drivetrain. It could be a loss in the tail rotor itself. It separates. It could be a gearbox blows out or something like this. Um, something has broken on the helicopter and you no longer have a tail rotor doing anything for you. Now there's a great video of an Apache in Afghanistan that had a tail rotor completely separate from the aircraft. Uh, and the helicopter managed to fly another 10 miles and safely land the helicopter at an airfield. But there are a few instances where this type of uh, loss of tail rotor co components could happen and what you would do. Um, the first is going to be, say, at a hover. Now when I'm talking about at a hover. Um, this is kind of like in the movie Black Hawk Down when you see an RPG hit the helicopter at a low airspeed type hover uh, profile. I'll put a link above if you haven't seen that clip. Um, but low airspeed position or at a hover where you really don't have the ability to fly away, although that could be one option. Um, but if it's not in the option, then really you're kind of stuck in a, a worst case uh, situation where you have to compromise between uh, your rate of turn versus your rate of descent. So would you rather turn less violently or fall less violently? Either way, you're kind of using the collective to mirror the difference between those and just try to get it to the ground in the safest way possible. It's not really a good situation to be in if you lose your tail rotor at a hover, especially a high hover. Um, another situation is if it's not at hover, it could be while you're in forward flight. If this is the case, it happens in forward flight, then you need to uh, maintain uh, the safe airspeed outlined in your operator's manual for a loss of tail rotor components. This could be 70 knots, 80 knots, 90, 100, 110, depends on what your helicopter is. Your operator's manual should specify a certain speed, but what's happening is as you get faster, the vertical fin or vertical fins on your helicopter offload the need for a tail rotor. Um, and so the faster you go, the less tail rotor required for flight. Um, so as you get faster, if you were to lose the tail rotor, then the vertical fin could start to offload that. But if that's the case, if you lose your tail rotor or tail rotor components in flight and you're able to maintain flight above that minimum airspeed, then you're going to be doing some type of shallow angle, high speed approach into a run-on or a roll-on landing. Um, in this case, once again, you're using your uh, collective and your throttle or power levers to kind of guide the nose in and minimize the yaw as you're trying to touch the helico uh, helicopter down on final. Uh, once again, practice this emergency in the simulator um, you know, as much as possible so that one day if you ever have a failure, you know how to react. Uh, but that wraps, wraps up this video. One takeaway for all of these is that airspeed is your friend. Above ETL, you're too fast for really these first two. And around your max rate of climb, endurance, airspeed, or your cruise speed, you offload the need for the tail rotor for the second two. But we can't always pick when and where the problems occur in an aircraft, so always practice the what-if scenarios. Once again, thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jacob. Safe flying.